The pulmonary hypertension is a condition where the pressure in the lungs are elevated. I think we're all familiar with hypertension or high blood pressure, which is what your doctor has measured for years. They put the blood pressure cuff on and you have a high blood pressure. But the heart has two sides, and one side pumps blood into the lungs. And pulmonary hypertension specifically refers to elevated pressure within the lungs. There are a lot of different causes of pulmonary hypertension. The symptoms of pulmonary hypertension are very nonspecific. Most patients present with shortness of breath, sometimes difficulty doing activities that they've been performing for years. Sometimes patients may get fatigued a little bit more easily or may notice some swelling. And so when we get referrals for pulmonary hypertension, a lot of our focus is determining actually whether or not they have pulmonary hypertension and then determining what may be causing the pulmonary hypertension. Practitioners are much more aware of the diagnosis and so an echocardiogram or heart ultrasound, which is a screening test, is now done more readily because providers are more aware. So that's our screening test, is a regular heart ultrasound. And if that suggests the presence of pulmonary hypertension or other abnormalities on the right side of the heart, then we become more aware of the diagnosis and then do further testing to determine the severity, the presence of pulmonary hypertension, and what may be causing it. So the treatment is dependent upon what the cause of the pulmonary hypertension is. Just looking at the population as a whole, uh, the most common cause of pulmonary hypertension is usually due to left heart disease. So over time, usually from high blood pressure or diabetes and advancing age, the heart may become stiff. There may be problems with heart valves and that can cause pulmonary hypertension over time. So that's what we call group two pulmonary hypertension related to left heart disease. That's the most common cause. The next more common cause is due to lung disease. We call group three pulmonary hypertension. And these are patients who may have emphysema or COPD from smoking, may have sleep apnea, or may have fibrosis or scarring within the lungs. And that's the second most common cause. For both of these types of pulmonary hypertension, we treat the underlying disease process. So for ones related to left heart disease, we try to treat the blood pressure, get it under control. If there are heart arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation, we try to control the arrhythmia. If there are valvular heart disease problems, we try to determine can those heart disease, valvular heart disease conditions be treated. For the lung disease, we try to modify risk factors. If they're smoking, we try to stop that, treat the COPD if needed. If patients have not had a diagnosis of sleep apnea, we refer them to a sleep study and treat that um, if it's present. There is a group one, that's pulmonary arterial hypertension, or PAH. Uh, this is a specific disease where the problem is with the blood vessels within the lungs themselves. What happens is the blood vessels in the lungs get narrowed, they get thick, and in some cases, tiny little clots can form within these uh, blood vessels. And so this is a, the rarest form of pulmonary hypertension, but the one where there are specific disease treatments available. Now back in the 90s, there were really no specific treatments, but now in 2016, we have 14 available treatments for this condition, which we call pulmonary arterial hypertension, or PAH. And the treatment is uh, determined by the severity of the PAH and the symptoms that the patient's experiencing. There are some risk factors for pulmonary arterial hypertension. We found that it's more common in patients with HIV and patients with scleroderma. So in those two groups, we actually have a screening process. So if you have HIV and you have scleroderma, we screen for development of pulmonary arterial hypertension because it is more common. We also see in patients with liver disease. And so patients with liver disease, we screen as well for development of pulmonary arterial hypertension. For the group two pulmonary hypertension, which is one of the most prevalent ones that I see as a cardiologist, it's kind of tried and true things that patients have been told for years. Uh, preventing ob obesity and overweight, blood pressure control, uh, weight, pr weight prevention so a diabetes doesn't develop, uh, watching the salt in the diet, and smoking cessation. So I think those, from a population standpoint, will control that aspect of pulmonary hypertension. For the pulmonary arterial hypertension, that's a much smaller group, and it encompasses a fairly heterogeneous group of patients.